here, you know, have another show the sea of glass. Must come to understand the power, of how to understand the scriptures. And I want to talk about that tonight. And we still went in my book. And we read from my, my own book. And because the book, this book here has been translated into the scriptures. So this is why we use my book. And I want to tell you that it's a great thing to be here. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, okay. Okay, for those following at home, uh, I know that a lot of people have acquired our book already, and they wanted to follow us as we read. So I'm just going to give you, like we used to do from the Bible, um, so I'm going to let you know that we're working from the book of Numbers, and this book on page 141. Okay. Now we are going to have a clear understanding of the Gershonites through the understanding of love to carry the guilt of the guilty and the innocent in all crimes of passion. A man commits a crime of passion and he has to suffer a penalty in prison where he cannot escape from the power to understand the Gershonites in the clan of the descendants of Aaron. The person who was never loved by mankind in your feelings would be so devastated to the fact that each criminal who is in prison for committing a crime understands the passion of their deeds and comes to understand their crimes and the value of the crime they have committed to be in the prison created by man and exhibited by men or a person must reveal his soul and understand why he was in love in the world of men. You got to understand here. This is what I want to talk to you about tonight. I understand the scriptures. Put yourself in the person that she's talking about there and try to understand his feelings here. You see me, I understand the scriptures, the Amalekite or the the. Gershonites. The Gershonite, in a way that you have to understand the verb that's in the scriptures in order to understand it. So you've got to really study the scriptures, understand what this guy is doing. There's a person that tried to find out why he's not love. And there's a lot of them, a lot of people around that are not loved by other people. For some reason, it could be their, their appearance, it could be their their speech problem, it could be all kinds of stuff. But these people out here, they have a very hard time to be loved by people. And this is how you improve yourself, by understanding the scriptures and get into the scriptures of the understanding that each, you see, God, when God wrote the Bible, he wrote it with all the symptoms of life. And there's a symptom of life for everything and he put a name in there. So you got to understand that the power to understand the scriptures is to study the, the verb that's in the Bible. This is how you understand. Next thing you know, you're going to be able to understand why God write these words for, why God pick these things into understanding, because he wants you to understand that the verb is God. And every man that comes on earth that live in a verb of some kind of an understanding must be respected because this is the way God has created mankind with the verb. So we cannot all be smile and good and 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 have a nice appearance and everything else. This is not what's important. It's important that you understand the person as the Lord has written about him and understand why these people they cannot be loved by anybody. You know, you know, they're probably homemade. They're probably people that are grumpy. People, there's all kinds of different things in the world that makes a person not be able to be loved by other people. And this is where the, how do you pronounce that word? The Malachi or the- No, the Gersonites. The Gersonite, okay? You gotta understand that the Gersonite in our midst is the people that cannot be loved. And what you do with that, you must understand how to understand them and must go deep into the, the, the reading of the scriptures 
and bring this to life because you are inside of you a person that wants to take. See, you take a subject like this and you stutter it inside yourself and you begin to understand what the Lord is talking about. And this is how, this is how I understood the Bible. You understand the Bible with the sacrifice in it. You know, why can I love this person? Why is this person bothers me? Is because you did not make him understand the power of yourself and you did not understood him that was in front of you. These people that comes around, you did liars and you don't like liars. You see, that's another, you know, and they'll tell you a story that is not true and you're not gonna love them because of that, you know? The thing is, you gotta go down to the feelings of your understanding and you gotta stutter the way the Lord has presented it. And the aggressionize of the people that over there to, you know, and they're hurting inside of them because nobody loves them. And it's a terrible thing not to be loved in this world. And these people are not loved by their family. They're not loved by their friends. They're not loved anywhere. And that's the people that makes criminal. That's the people that, that comes and, and rape people and do all kinds of different things because they don't have any love inside of them that other people shows on them. And this hurts, you know. It's a very painful thing to a person not to be loved. It's not an easy thing. And you really have to work to come to the understanding. This is what my book is all about, is to understand and go deep into the understanding of the scriptures and understand what it means. And that's a good way to, to look at the Bible and understand with the verbs. Because God is the verb, so he created us with the verb. So we all have something in our life that other people won't like. Go ahead, Mark and Mike. See, this is a show about love. But let me start off first by saying the book that we wrote is called The Sea of Glass by Roger Akerley. Rita, show up the cover of the book, please. The Sea of Glass by Roger Akerley. And if you wish to find out more information, you can find it online. Okay, thank you. Now, this is a book about love. This Today's show is about love. And everybody needs to be loved. No matter who you are, you need to be loved. And it doesn't matter if you don't have the look that the people want or you have some, some issues going on and so you get teased or picked on or bullied or, or you get rejected. But everybody has feelings that they want to be loved and they want to be accepted and felt like, okay, well, because they have feelings like, like you do. And the Gersonites are the ones that people can't love. And, but you have to figure out a way to love them because they're an equal to you. Just despite the differences that we all have, we're all equals. Doesn't matter what race we are or what gender we are or what sexual orientation or what team we're a fan of or what, how tall we are or anything you can think of that, that makes us different, we're still equal. And you have to love people. And it's hard to love people under the old heaven because the old heaven is about dividing people. And it's about saying they're not as good as we are. They don't know as enough as we are. They're not as spiritual or as holy as we are. So, so when you put people on a scale like that and you put them beneath you, you feel like on some level, well, you don't have to love them as much as you, have, as you might love somebody else. But everybody deserves to be loved equally. And it hurts when you're not loved. And that's where these things come from because it confuses people who say, look, I just like everybody else. I don't feel like I'm beneath anybody, but they put me like that. And and then people will lash out, and that's where you have a lot of the stuff you have today. So if mankind can stop thinking of the world, and I know I say this all the time, but if mankind can stop thinking of the world as us and them and start thinking of their fellow man as we, because we're all together, then... A lot of this stuff that's going on that you see on the news all the time is going to go away because people won't feel the need to do it because they won't be treated as differently. And 
That's what's important to understand about love. That's what true love is. True love is, is if you can love those people that are hardest to love because they're different enough from you that you find it hard to love them because you can't understand what they're doing, where they're coming from. But if you can love them, that's what true love is about. And people don't feel the need to, to feel isolated and different and unloved. So that's what's going to bring people together. And to tear down those walls that separate us, we have to find out and and speak out against and do what we can to inform people of, of what's causing that. This is what you must do once you realize it. And what's causing that is things like religion. False religion of the world divides because they don't unite like they claim to because they say we're better and they're not better and they wage wars over the whole thing. And this is the problem because they're dividing, they're not uniting, which is a problem that I have with organized religion and which is why it's against the truth as the Lord teaches it. And we're going to find out more as we go along. Go ahead, Regan. And I wanted to add to what Mike was saying. If every one of us looks back at our childhood, growing up, whatever circumstances that you were brought up in, a lot of us, I would say a good 95% of us, grew up feeling not wanted, not loved, so if everyone looks at themselves that way, you can understand how some people in society today feel. Okay, this is the power of our God and man come together and the value of being punished for each crime. The trouble here is that society has committed a crime against the soul of the criminal and did not pay for that crime. That person is feeling inside his soul the guilt of his own sin. But the people who put them there are the Gershonites, where to, th where to them life was given, has given them the freedom to live as they please. The power here is a restriction where a man who is imprisoned has to pay a value of his own soul and the unhappiness of life. This is the time when you must understand the guilt of your physical self committing a crime and your spirit is punishing you for that crime. Uh, you got to understand the power here to love. You know, hard, love is about the hardest thing that you can deal with when it comes to scriptures and religion and everything else because nobody seems to understand love. They call love something on a shelf somewhere and they don't understand the real love that you have to commit yourself to understand people. Just tell them a little thing nice about themselves. And then I tell you, that's worth a big value over. Some people that you call good looking every day, I oh, said, you're a good looking girl, a good looking guy. That don't mean nothing. What the, the great power is to tell a person that don't have those charms, that don't have the charms that everybody wants. It, you got to come to understand that the power to give a good compliment to a person that never had a compliment, it's 15 times power, more powerful than telling a person that's good looking and, and you know, and that, that person comes in and says, oh, geez, I'm so good looking. Yes, but try to understand to give to the power. And you're going to say, well, I feel that I lie. No, that's not a lie. To tell a person his charms, to tell a person his way, and I do that in society all the time. Because I think that people needs to be loved. I, I really think that the society right now, and, and then they turn against society and kill people and shrew people because it's not the real love that was predicted for this creation. You must come to understand and, and you must come to like the people that don't like themselves. You know, you, you must make an effort inside of you to give to these people the greatest power of all is to be able to love themselves. That's the reason they commit crime to begin with, because they don't like themselves. And, and if you go there and, and, and give them the wrong answer, they, they're going to be hurt, so hurt, that they'll go on shooting people. You gotta understand, 
that the government tells you, take all the guns away and that, that thing is be over. It's not going to work like that. It works in love. And if you cannot bring love to a situation of reality where the truth has to stand for, this is where it is. You find something good in somebody that's not like, uh, you know, you go by a table in the morning of having breakfast and you see a person there that's really distressed and all that, you give him a nice compliment. He had a beautiful style for you because you said it's something that lights a, uh, lights a lamp inside of him. And this is how love must work. Now, you, don't, you don't have to lie now. You just tell him what you think. Me, I'm a person that like to look at people and find something good out of them. And that's the most important thing of all because you're taking the, the aggress, aggress and I, you know, and put them in the middle of value. Once you take these people and put in the middle of a value, they begin to feel good about themselves. You know, a lot of these people that make those big disasters and shoot a lot of people are feeling like that. And each one of us, instead of getting rid of all the guns, get rid of these damn bad comments that you make on people, or you, know, you heard them with, with uh, bigotry or anything, get rid of it. Stop, stop that bigotry and be kind to people that are there to love each one of us. You know, me, I love everybody. I don't have anybody in my heart that I can't love. And there's people in my life that, you know, commit a crime and all that, and I still love them. And I don't have to hate them. I don't have to sit somewhere else from where they are. I can sit with them anywhere because it's not important to me what they did. It's important to me what I did. You know, that's the way it is in life. If you are a popular person, be kind and try to love other people as yourself. You see, the Bible was written for people as such. And you can see these scriptures, you know, and that's why I, I wrote on them because I want you to understand the other side of it. I don't want you to understand that this was not done because everybody's evil. That's not true. We all have goodness inside of us. You were created good and evil in each one of us. Why does a person turn to evil and the other person turn to good all the time? Because there's some of us that thinks that it's more important to promote someone than to put him down, you know? Okay, read a little bit more, read about that. Uh, maybe Mike has something to add? Yeah. Well, I do, and see. Yeah, I'm sorry. That's all right. Yeah. We, we talk about love, and people will say, well, I know what love is. It takes you, it takes you your whole life in many, many different years and years and thousands of years to really understand what love is. We still don't understand it. And we, as a race, have been around, as a species, have been around how many thousands and thousands of years? So love is, like I said before, you have to love the people that you find to be hard to love. And if you say to yourself, well, I'm attracted to, you know, women that are pretty and they have, you know, big breasts or, or I'm attracted to guys with big muscles or they look nice. They could be a model or whatever. I, I can't go out with somebody who's overweight or is not in shape or doesn't have the look that, that the world right now thinks is, 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 is attractive. You, you haven't mastered love if, if, if you can't get past that. And if you can't sit with somebody and you can't be seen with somebody because you know, maybe they have a handicap, physical or mental handicap, or maybe there there's something else going on with them and they have depression or they don't look, you know, maybe they they dress the way you don't like or, or whatever. And you haven't mastered love if you say, I can't sit with them and eat with them and talk with them and share a cup of coffee or whatever with them. And, and I can't be in a relationship with them and I can't be friends with them. These are the things we're talking about. They're just like you are, but they're just different. They have feelings just like you are, and they get angry when when they're mad, and they get hurt if you hurt them, and they get sad, and they're happy just like you are, and I am, and Rita is, and everybody is. And the thing is, you the, the, 
So you have to be able to love them. Now, it doesn't mean that you have to sit and talk with every single person. It means, can you sit and talk with somebody like that if, and not worry about and say, well, well, that's not for me. No, these are the things that are important. And this is part of what mastering love is. And you, you see too many times that people aren't included because they, they exclude people instead of include people. And this is the thing that makes people sad because they, they don't understand. They're living by their feelings, just like you are most of the time. And they say, well, I don't understand why I'm getting rejected. Why is it that, that somebody else gets all the attention? These kind of people get all the attention and I, people like me get none of the attention. Well, that's why. And, and if you search your heart and say, I've been rejecting people and not accepting people, you're part of the problem. But we don't generally look at it that way. And we look at other people and say, look how crazy they are. They go and shoot up a place or they go and drive a, their vehicle into a crowd or they go and, and, you know, on some kind of a, a mass murder or whatever. It's, it's society that makes these people, okay? They're, because people do and say, from what they choose to believe in. And the, but it's also the society around them that affects that. And that's why you should, you should say to people, you can find nice things to say about people and, and instead of rejecting them. And, and, and it's better for people, it's better for all of us that way because that's part of uniting people instead of dividing people. And again, like I said earlier, this is the problem. The problem all goes back to everything that divides us from each other instead of unites us. And it happens in religion and it happens in politics and it happens in just about any subject in life. People will find a reason to d divide ourselves from others instead of uniting us together. And that's what's causing this problem. Go ahead, Rita, read some more. Understand well that there's a guilt inside your soul where you lost your animal being and now you have to pay with your spirit because you allowed your animal to lose in the passion of the dream that was unclean. You can blame whatever side you want to, but at the center of intelligence, you are guilty of the physical crime and you have to fix your physical crime with some of your spiritual value. You have to stay by your side inside your soul in the prison where you have to pay equally to what you have done. The person who is being punished in this world must understand his punishment is not for only this life and the sacrifice of this life, but in the time to come where you will not commit crimes of the same passion. This is because the Lord has punished you here and now and took your restrictions away from you because you have let your animal live free in the wild. And now you must restrict your animal from the punishment, even though society did not like or love you. Society just tried to back you, bring you back to reality where you would have another chance of the resurrection of the soul. This is where society is guilty here because they take your whole life in exchange for prison time for this crime of passion. But you and that individual and the feelings that you live in, in, in are all Gershonites where your heart is full of guilt and you cannot understand why the Lord has punished you so much. You got, you got to come to this is beautiful to tell you. I wrote it and, 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 uh, uh, guy next to me here, you know, edit it. But the thing is, it's beautiful to hear this. It's the most beautiful to see what can you do for your brother? And what I was telling you there, that you have to look at the verb in the Bible in order to understand the Bible. This is nothing that you come to understand for yourself. You read the scriptures in a way of the verb. And once you start understanding that everything is a verb, that every, everything that everybody does is a verb, and this is how the Lord named them. And he wants you to love all men, not the guy that goes to church with you, not the guy that goes to work with you, everybody, you know, and this is somebody that works in the office and you work in the shop, you know, you can, you can love this person by just being kind to, to her. Uh, if she looks like she's, you know, you know, some high status, that don't mean nothing. 
What means something is what you feel about her, about him, about the understanding. And if you listen to other people, other people are very mean and very, very cruel with comment about people. Next thing you know, you have, you listen to the people that don't make no sense with commenting about other people, and then you start to believe like them. The thing is, this is why the scripture is that you go look at the verb, and what happened is this power of understanding, where the, the glory of a human being looks deep down in the heart of a human being and find a good verb to place on the statue of that person. And this is the way it works. You don't come to understand, you know, that the verb, it has to be, you find it in the scriptures, you put it inside yourself, and next thing you know, you know how to do it. And this is how I come to understand most of the scriptures, by placing that verb inside myself, by placing a person that's not love, and you love him. You know, and, and I, I didn't experience this in my life with all the people that surround me, and it's very hard to do. But this is where it makes you a God-loving man by loving the Lord your God, by loving what he created, and that's the way it is. I know God said, well, I can't create the whole world perfect. I got to create some people of all kinds. And this is the way it is, because there was no way in the creation of perfectness. It was only possible to create people in the image of the understanding. And sometimes they has to have people that do the things that are stupid in front of you, and then you don't try to blame them for it. Try to protect them. Try to say you didn't mean to do that. They were just, you know, because all of these things that you do for the truth, you do it for God. God is the truth. And if you love the Lord God, your heart, you love the truth. And that's how it goes. Unless you can understand that God is the truth, you don't understand God. You see, I don't think a, a Christian, I never heard a Christian said that he loves the truth in front of God. They love Jesus in front of God, but that's an image. They love Buddhists in front of God, but that's another image. The thing is, try to understand that what you do to others is your deeds that will come to be accounted for in the values of good and evil, in the values of right and right and, right and wrong. This is where it is. And you, you commit your heart to understand you know, right and wrong. Next thing you know, you can live a better life on, your, on earth and nobody can tell you that that better life now is not going to be abstracting because you're going to have your, your abstraction. It's, but the thing is, try to love. Because every time you do something against the pores of the earth, you do it to God. And that, that's the way it is because it tells you there. It, whatever you do to the least of mine, you will do it to me. You know, and that's the way it works. So try to do, and don't think that the Lord lets you get away with that when you, you swear against someone and you, you make him look awful, you know. Just look at yourself in the this, this, this stimulation of the truth. And you understand that I wrote this book for the purpose that all men can, can treat each other equal in the fashion of love and the fashion of life and try to understand that nothing was given to you that was taken from you. It's you that took it from yourself and made yourself, you know, an abundance of stupidity. You know, you come back to your senses, come back to the reality of the truth, come back to all these things, the common sense of it, and then you find yourself there, right there in the middle of all. Right. See, we talk about the mind versus the spirit. You're living in the mind or living in the spirit. Now, 
This is this is what we mean when we say that. And I know we've said it before, but I don't think I could say it enough times because not enough people are in this world. Almost nobody is actually doing it. But when you think of the mind, and we always say the mind works and the mind deals with loss and gain. And that's very true. So when you think of the mind, you think of, say you're, you're, you're an inventor or you're a scientist and you discover things, that's through loss and gain. And you say, well, if I do this, this will happen. And if I do that, that will happen. And sometimes it's for the better and sometimes it's not for the better, it's for the worse. And that's how the mind works. The mind works with great inventors and scientists and techno technology and engineering and all that. But it also works in your life, too, where you say, well, if I go and spend all my money at the casino, I don't have money to pay my bills. This is what's going to happen. Or, you know, if I decide not to get up and I'm going to be late for work, I'm late for work enough times. This is what's going to happen. I mean, it works on both sides. But and it's necessary to have the mind that works that way. Because the mind deals with loss and gain, and it's and it's in the physical world we need to have loss and gain because it helps us understand the physical world around us. Now we talk about the spiritual, the spiritual world. When you understand with spirit, the spirit doesn't think in terms of loss and gain. The spirit is unconditional, and the spirit just knows its feelings, and the spirit knows love, and the spirit knows anger, and the spirit knows sadness, and the spirit knows joy and happiness, and. It's unconditional. It doesn't think about what I'm going to lose and what I'm going to gain from that. So that's why we, uh, the best way I can explain it at the moment is, is when you build your house, which is the life you live based on what you believe in, you want to build your house on a strong foundation and you want to build your house on a foundation of spirit because the spirit needs to lead the mind. And what I mean by that is when you understand that the spirit just feels and it's unconditional, you don't worry about what you're gaining or losing by if you talk to that person who's who's handicapped or if you help people out when when, when they need it or if you you know what people are going to say if you start dating somebody who's overweight or or has other kind of issues or whatever you say look these are my feelings and i'm going to go with those that's when the spirit leads the mind because you're not worried about what you're losing you're gaining you're going with your natural feelings and that's the difference between the spirit and the mind and almost nobody is living by the spirit letting the spirit lead the mind Nobody current, almost nobody in the human race currently, even though they think they are, they're not really because it's all about loss and gain. And they'll say, well, I don't like this kind of people or I don't like that kind of people or I don't like this. They're not thinking about it properly. So in order to truly love, you also have to let the spirit lead the mind because it's unconditional. And religion doesn't teach that. Religion teaches that these people are good and these people over here are evil. When everybody can be good or evil and at times is. And so therefore people aren't evil people. And there's not people that are only good. When, when you hear people say, well, they're a good person and they would never do anything, you don't know. You're not with them 24-7 and you're not inside their heart. So you don't know the things that they believe in and the things that they do. Just like the people you say are terribly evil and everything. Maybe it's because they're living in a world where people automatically don't like them. And so they figure they have nothing to lose because no matter where I go, somebody puts me down because of what I look like, how much I weigh, or because of how I dress, or because I, I have some kind of handicap that I can't overcome, and I can't make it go away. So you have to understand, this is how that works, and you have to let the spirit lead the mind, because that's the key to understanding. The scriptures were written the same way. The scriptures were written, they, many people look at the scriptures in just about every organized religion, looks at the scriptures from the physical standpoint, and they say, well, Jesus physically walked on water. Jesus was a man who physically, physical man who physically walked on water. Or there was a physical ark and a physical flood and all these animals and everything. Now, these are physical lessons to help you understand the spiritual meaning behind it, which is deeper and which should be the foundation. So when you understand that Jesus represents common sense and water represents reality, then you look at it and you say, okay, it's not Jesus physically walked on water. It's common sense walks on reality. And what that means is that 
when you understand with common sense, you're on top of the reality of life. You can understand the reality of life. You can walk on it without falling and drowning in the reality that you don't understand. So that's how that all works. They're, they're physical examples, just like the parables themselves of Jesus were physical examples. And anytime he gave those examples and the people he was talking to said, well, we understand what a fig tree is. We understand what the mustard seed is. And then Jesus said, okay, now take that up to the spiritual level. Jesus taught in, in parables with physical examples because people hadn't developed their spirit. And if he gave you directly in spirit, at the time, you would say, I don't understand. It's too deep for me. I don't understand. So it had to be explained more or less in baby terms. And that was what, what people could understand. So he explained it with a physical lesson the mind could understand. And he said, you have to bring it to the level of the spirit. Understand that this is really a spiritual lesson, even though it's with a physical example. And that's how you're going to come to understand. And if you can find me a religion on this earth right now, a man-made organized religion that's teaching from the spirit because there really is none. I can't find one. So that's what's important to understand about this is you have to build your house on the strong foundation of spirit. Let the spirit lead the mind and you can come to understand. And at that point, when you talk to the Lord yourself inside your heart, which is where you should be talking to the Lord, you don't need to go to a church or a temple or talk to a rabbi or a priest or a minister because you're supposed to understand this yourself and you will understand it directly from the Lord so that you know that it's accurate and true. And we're going to hear more. Go ahead, Rita. Try to understand your clans that were not loved by society because you didn't look right to them. You were not a favorite one or because you did not have the clan to be loved. That's why the Lord made you come to the clan of Levi in the great power of the tribe of Israel. Remember that the Lord punishes those who are not loved by society for the salvation of their own soul, but do not despair. Your clan comes from Levi, the most valuable son of Jacob. Remember that your grandmother, Leah, or his grandmother, was not loved by Jacob, and that is why you became the children of Leah, the wife that Jacob did not love. But you were committed to live life, and the Lord has not forgotten you because of your clan in the family of Jacob. You have to understand, this is the way the, the Bible was written. <clears throat> you know, you really have to go back inside your soul and look at the scriptures. Because the tribe of Israel is to be able for you to understand different type of people. And that's the way it is in the world today. You see, if you were born from, from Leah, which is the first wife of Jacob, and because understand that his father-in-law tricked him into marrying Leah, and then he wanted ritual. But everybody wants somebody that's good looking, and it's nice, and it's perfect. And you reject those by doing that, those that love to be loved like everybody else. So you, you come to an understanding here between what is the right way to love people and the wrong way to love people. If you fall in love with a beautiful woman and she betrayed you, you're going to feel betrayed. And there's a lot of people are divorced today and they, they, they were betrayed by this woman that they thought it was the <laughs> world, you know, and could never do nothing wrong. See that look does not mean look is deceiving. And if you look at look, start of looking at heart, then you will be deceived because it's not the way it comes, it's the way it is. You know, you got to understand that God as creating man, and there was a big, big, huge burden for him, even though he's God, to create the world the way the world is. And many, many things that he did was because of the, the understanding of people and the way people act and the way people. God knew what was going to happen to all of us, you know, today. And he knows that a lot of people were greatly loved, a lot of people were not loved. But you have to make an effort inside yourself 
to love the Lord your God and his creation. To love God is not enough to say, I love God. And you, you don't love the way the scriptures worked out. You don't love really what the Lord is saying. So if you don't obey the laws of the Lord, you're not, you're not with the Lord. You're not on the Lord's, you know. And if you're not on the Lord's great power, what happens is that you break the, 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 the value of what the person of the Lord is inside your shore. You got to love God with all your soul and with all your mind and everything else. And you can't form image of people. If you form an image, this woman is beautiful and this woman is not, so I'm going to choose a beautiful one. Well, you make the bad choice. You know, you got to understand that a lot of people are going to love this person because she has all the, the good, <coughs> the good germ to love. You know, the, the, you know the, the great charm to love. And that's the way it is. And you got to come to the understanding that this is the creation of the Lord. And the Lord made this creation for the purpose of happiness. And then you look at the world and you see nobody that's happy. Why? Because nobody follow the Lord and his wisdom. You know, so you got to come to understand that the Lord's wisdom is to be able to understand that everything that the world is written. And when I studied, studied the Bible, and I, I spent my life on the Bible, I tried to understand the verb and see what make people so stupid and so ignorant. Because they live with their little mind, that little mind of them, and they see a beautiful woman, and they think she's the world's greatest thing, and that woman will satisfy them in life. That's not the way it is. You're better off to love everybody. You see, marriage is not going to stay no more. Marriage is not clean. So you, you're going to live in, in a life in the new world where people will not get married. There won't be no marriage. And there won't be people marrying people because they're in love with them. They got, you're going to marry people because they satisfied you with everything that they are. That's the way it's going to be in the future. And I don't think that a man should sell his soul to a woman or a man or anything else. I think that it's, it's, you should be free and try to understand the freedom of the heart, to love everybody as the greatest part of yourself. Okay, Mike. See, up to now in this show, we've been talking about, and I mentioned, okay, the people that are hard to love and the people that have been rejected. Now, the thing is, I also said that we're all equal. And that means that you and I, we've all at some point in our life been rejected and have been hard to love in certain situations. You may look pretty and have the look that, that, that the people like physical beauty, but maybe you don't have intelligence. So those women that they say look really pretty, but they're not really intelligent. They call them airheads sometimes and everything. So they, they've been rejected. They have the look, but they've been rejected. Or you have somebody that, that is smart, but maybe they don't have a lot of money. So they say, well, I reject you because you don't have a lot of money. You're poor. So every one of us have been, have been accepted in some way, but also rejected in some way. And the thing is, that's the part that tells you that if you understand the times when you yourself have been rejected, you already know what it's like to be rejected. So therefore, you almost have no business rejecting others because you know what it's like. And it didn't feel very good when, you, when you've been rejected. So that's why it's not a good idea. You already have the lesson, but you don't learn it. And a lot of it is because you're not told that, okay, this is how it works. Religions of the world don't tell you that. They tell you just accept Jesus as your savior and you're saved. Or they tell you go take a little piece of bread in your mouth and, and go confess what, what are supposed to be sins to a priest and they're forgiven and then you're clean again. But you're not really clean again because you didn't understand what you did and why you did it and why it is or isn't a good idea to do. 
So you're just going through the motions. It's like getting lucky. It's like pulling the lever on a slot machine and, and, and three cherries come up and you win some money and it's just luck. And the thing is, but, but you don't really understand why you did what you did and why it works and why it doesn't work. But when you do, you realize, okay, I might want more of this because now I have an idea of what works and what doesn't work. That's why they say, and it's cliched, but the definition of, of insanity is you do the same thing over and over again and each time you expect a different result. And, and it's because you don't understand what you're doing and why you're not getting a different result. So it drives you crazy because you're crying for something that's never going to happen. But when you understand what you're doing and why you're doing it, then you can say, okay, I, this is not going to work. I need to change something so that the next time I do it, I can get a little better and a little better and a little better. And I can get closer to making these things work because you understand what works and what doesn't work. It's not about, well, you just accept Jesus as your savior and you're saved. Or you just you just say a prayer that you've said a zillion times in your life or say the rosary. No, this is image. These are graven images and this is idol worship. And it's forbidden by the Lord. And so you don't really worship the, the, the true God of Abraham, Jacob, and Isaac. You're worshiping a false God in that point. And that's the part in scriptures where it says, you call out to me. The Lord says, you call out to me. And I say, I don't know who you are. Because you've been worshiping a false God this whole time. So you ask the Lord for help when you're in deep trouble. And the Lord's going to go, I don't know who you are. You, your name's not written in the book of life because you haven't asked for your name to be written in the book of life. You haven't gone through the sacrifice of learning, which is hard. And it says right here, the Lord has caused these things to happen for the purpose of your salvation. You have to go through the pain and suffering of, of just like anything in life. When you study for a test, it's hard because you can't watch TV or go outside or go see your friends or, or whatever when you're in school age child or in college. And you have to study for your test so you can do well and pass it. It's a sacrifice. If you want to get in shape, it's a sacrifice of watching what you eat and exercising and getting enough sleep and drinking enough water and everything. It's a sacrifice. So this is the sacrifice that you go through is the pain and the suffering while you're learning what works and what doesn't work. And God created life that way. There's no way around it. So when people say, well, you just do this and you're saved. No, no, that's not how God created the world. God created mankind so that you have to go through the pain and suffering of childbirth, which is the birth of spiritual understanding. And it must work the way that the Lord set it up. You can't change it just because you say, I don't want to go through that. Or someone comes up with an idea and says, no, here's the way it works. You should know that this is the way it works. And it's like a salesman that tries to sell you something that's not true. It's the same thing. These people of religion are selling you something that's not true and it doesn't work. And, and there's no greater evidence than the fact that for thousands and thousands of years, majority of the human races believed in some form of organized religion or another. And there are hundreds, if not thousands of them out there to pick from. And the world just progressively gets worse and worse and worse and worse. We make little steps here and there. We make, okay, you can't be prejudiced. That's illegal. You can't own slaves. That's fine. Now, now people have rights that didn't have rights before. Women can now vote and own property. Okay, so we make little strides, but they're little baby steps. Still, it's not enough, and you have to go further, and you have to understand that this is what needs to be done. And like I said, organized religion isn't teaching it. And we're going to see more as we go, so go ahead, Reed. Yeah, you can tell we all have personal stories about uh, being unloved and whatnot. Uh, we're putting our, how would you say that, on our sleeves? Wearing our hearts on our sleeves yeah. because what we're doing is we're, we're telling you, look, we know what that's like. We've been through it. Yeah. And, and if you think about it, you have too. Yeah. There's always a point in your life when, when you weren't loved and you weren't rejected on something. And then you say, okay, well... Now you now if you know what it's like and, and you should because you've gone through it, now you know how other people feel and, and maybe you don't want other people to feel that way. So you might do you might decide to do your part so that you don't you're not the cause of other people feeling that way. Anyway, I'm sorry, go ahead, Rita. That's okay. 
Now I'm going to skip around a little bit uh, because we talked a lot about this. Now let's look down deep into our souls. See if you can exercise love and the passion of the Lord. See if you can love those who cannot be loved, accept those who need to be accepted, and bring them forth to be loved. Understand well the clan of the Levi, and understand that if you need to be loved by others, then you need to love others in the same clan of where you are. If you are good-looking and are popular with others, more will be asked of you to love those who are hard to love in the same clan, the clan that you want to be loved. This is because you come from the same recipe of those who cannot be loved. You see this in the kingdom that God has made. Try placing your trust to love others as you want to be loved and, and as you want to be popular in the world of men. Make sure that you love the forgotten, the people on drugs, people whom everybody hates, people who are nasty, miserable, and hard to get along with. You could be in any one of those clans with them and suffer in prisons of souls who cannot be loved because God made you beautiful and popular to test your love and see where you are going in the world. You have to be tested since you live in the vanity of your soul and you forget to love your brother. You, you got to understand here that the worst thing you can do in this world, think of yourself as a good person above everybody else. <laughs> you know, if you can't come down to love people as people want to be loved, they want to be loved in the simple things in life. They want to be accepted. They want you to agree with them when they're, they're in the trouble, and they want you to understand their pain and their suffering in order for you to become a better person. You have to let these people get ahead of you and being good above them will not work. Just show them. The simple thing inside of you, you fail in many ways because that's what life is all about. If life was just a big, big, huge success of everything that you do, then it would be part of the understanding of this great power. But to love one another is the greatest gift that you can do. There's no other greatest thing. You know, and then to love God as yourself, to love your, your brothers as yourself, you got to connect those three things together because everybody was created by God. Everybody was created to understand the Lord God of heaven and live in the passion of your feelings. You know, Try to work with your feelings. When you see someone that looks awful, don't look at them as awful. You have to change some of your feeling inside of you, except sometimes they may have a bad haircut. They may have a, an afro and look terrible. But don't feel that way. Just love them as they are. You don't have to tell them that their hair do don't do nothing for them. That's not the greatest power of all. The greatest power of all is to look at them as their equal people to you. You see, what happened to this world and why people are really trying to hurt one another and shooting people, they just want to be heard. They just want themselves to be heard by someone. And everybody goes and says, well, no, I can't love him. You know, you know, he's got all these faults that I don't like. Yeah. Anyway, we got a few more minutes there to finish the show. And you got to understand that this is what it is to love people that are harder to love. I'll, I gave it to Mike. Or See, this is, it just said, Rita just said a little bit ago, you know, if you have a look that's beautiful to the world and you're attractive in, in the way that the world thinks, you, you more will be asked of you. That's because if you if you're born into that kind of privilege where you're born into money or you're born into that you have this look and everything, then what happens is you didn't have to work for what you're getting. 
here. So it's more is asked of you. It's a harder road for you. People think of it backwards usually and think, well, it's easy because I've already got this part beat, but you didn't learn anything. So it's actually harder because it's harder for you to learn something when you don't have to struggle to get it. And, and that's the thing that we're trying to help everybody understand that you you have to work and struggle and go through the sacrifice because that's the only way there's any value in what you've gained is if you work hard and struggle to get it. And that's the key of this show and that's part of the understanding of love itself. And if Rita has anything else to add before we're done, please no, go ahead. I think that's it. Uh, anyway, yeah. uh, this is the end of the show and we wish you all the best of love. Again, yeah. Yeah. It's The Sea of Glass by Roger Akerley, and you can find information online about it. And thank you very much for tuning in, and we will see you in the next show. Nick Augustino, right here at the East Side Restaurant. We always have the complete full dinner menu. Knockwurst, bratwurst, sour broughton, potato pancakes, red cabbage, rice pudding, cream pies, all the desserts that Germany had to offer. I always do something different. Yes, I do. I brought seafood to the beer garden at the East Side Restaurant. East Side Restaurant, your German destination restaurant in Connecticut. Tiggy-tocky, tiggy-tocky, hoi, hoi, hoi!